The bodies. Sa. They're waiting for the bodies to appear. And they're waiting fearfully if it's going to be their turn next. Langit. The bodies come with a darkness that quickly descends after the last moments of daylight, when only a tiny fraction of the sun peeps from behind the cuernos de negros in the west. They manifest in the instance that the sun disappears, scattering a rash of purple and pink across the skies, bathing everything in a shimmer that ushers in a creeping blackness. On normal days before the troubles began, no one would have noticed this change in light and the malefic descent into darkness because the city itself would be aglow in electric incandescence, would be distracted by the homebound traffic, would be wrapped in the business of living. In the now pervading silence, the houses everywhere are barricaded and dark, save for the hints of candlelight flickering behind closed windows, the only signs left now to tell the curious that people are still alive, that people are merely hiding that people know there is something terribly wrong stirring on their streets. Now, in the aftermaths of sunsets, the street lamps still somehow sputter to life, their halogen orange glow now casting a new eeriness that wasn't there before. Why do the street lamps still turn on? The university professor asked once before being shushed by everyone else. But they knew that the power grids were still in place. The refrigerator still hummed, though they don't dare turn anything else on. Not the lights especially. And then, a few nights later, after the familiar sirens sounded off from far away, they saw the first ones, outside, on the street, scattered here and there, prone on the ground looking dead, twenty at least in this part of Alfonso Trece, but they couldn't see beyond the limits of their windows. The bodies all wore white, a puzzling detail. And the whiteness of their clothes belies traces of blood and smudges of dirt. Around their necks were signs made from cardboard, the letters on them spelling out, in careful print, one word, Bato. Stone, Ramon muttered, reading the puzzling detail and looking out through the slats of their barricaded windows that first night. What the fuck does that mean? Stone. In the orange cast of the street lamps, the skin of these dead bodies looked pale and purple all at once, as though the corpses had been drained of blood. This is stupid, the university professor was saying, his voice very loud. Why is this going on? Why aren't we doing something? We can't live here forever in fear. Shut up, shut up, and dami mong alam. Trinidad shushed him angrily, but he would not shut up. Don't look. Ramon hissed at his sisters, who were scrambling to take a look. Later, their mother whimpered throughout the night, and sleep was uneasy for all of them. The houseboy kept watch, occasionally looking out the window slats, and occasionally checking whether the front door downstairs was dead bolted and secure. In the first light of day, the bodies disappeared. No one had come to collect them. They disappeared as mysteriously as they had appeared. They didn't appear again for several nights, and when they finally did, it was right after Teresa first heard the sound. <laughs> like that. <laughs> A chuckle that came from the shadows and gave her goosebumps. <laughs> Later, she quickly noticed that the university professor was strangely absent among them and had not eaten his share of their meager supper. It was also she who first noticed that the bodies had come back. Look, she said from her perch beside the window. Down below, the bodies are back. And isn't that the professor over there? Ramon and the houseboy rushed to her side. It was indeed the professor, his body on the street curb. And even from the distance, Teresa could see very well that his eyes were open, were vacant in their terrible deadness. Magda burst into tears, and Lola Dolores was quick to pull both her grandchildren into her embrace. No one goes out, Ramon said in a flat voice. Did the professor go out? Lola Dolores asked. I don't freaking know, Ramon replied. But Mon, we need new supplies. We've run out of food, Trinidad said. 
I need to go downstairs, to the store, to get more canned goods. Ramon hesitated and then told his mother, Soon, but not now, not tomorrow, but soon, and only in the daylight. And above all this whispered back and forth, Teresa heard the chuckle one last time. <laughs>